CGM Graybox just got a big update, giving you a lot more fine-tuning control for your generated projections. Let's check them out by texturing this low-poly tank. First off, let's initialize our meshes in the Setup tab by selecting the meshes we'll be projecting to and clicking Load Selected. Click Yes through the dialog boxes to initialize the meshes with the necessary materials. Let's go into the Project tab and dock gray box over to the side. Switch over to the projection camera and frame your model. Let's go over to the prompt field and describe what we're going for. Let's make this a tiny yellow tank, cute, battle-worn, chipped paint. We really want a masterpiece here, so we'll increase its prompt weight by enclosing it in parentheses and increasing its value to 1.3. Add scorch marks and finish it up with some more positive words of encouragement, photorealistic, hyper-detailed, uh, that sort of thing. Our negative prompt describes things we don't want, like blurriness, lack of detail, and depth of field. Now we'll set our resolution and adjust our batch count to 4 so that we have multiple results to choose from. If you've watched our earlier Battle Armor video, you'll see we now have an Auto Depth checkbox, which automates fiddling around with the depth sliders. If you uncheck the box, you could still use the Guess button to set the initial values and then fine-tune your depth pass in the IPR Render window. Most of the time, the guessed values will be fine for what you're doing, but we want you to have full control over your projections. Let's click the Auto Depth checkbox back on and hit the Generate button to get our first projection. And now we got our four images to choose from and the depth map that was used to generate them. Another new feature we have is the Noise Slider, which adds noise to the depth map to have stable diffusion work better at making up details. Here you could see how the noise slider affects the depth pass and how it impacts the resulting image. Another new feature is normal pass support, providing a different processor for control net to work off of. The normal material is created when initializing the mesh in the first step and then to use it for your generation, just make sure preprocessor is set to none which tells CGM Graybox to try and use its own. And then, set your control net model to the normal processor and hit Generate. Now you could see we have four new generated images to choose from, and the normal processor has done a better job than the depth processor in preserving the faceting on our tank. Now let's delve a bit into the weight slider, which will play a bigger role when dealing with multiple control nets. Here you could see how the weight slider affects our generated images using our depth pass. At around 0.5, ControlNet does a good job of conforming the generated image to the geometry of the mesh. And when overdriven past 1.0, it starts warping the color, increasing contrast, and even losing some information in the tread mechanism. Now this is showing how weight affects the image using our normal pass. It takes the value to go up to 0.75 before the image conforms well to the mesh, and when driven past 1.0, the generated image starts to take on a more stylized, faceted look. Let's look at multiple control nets. Under the control net section, you can now enable up to four control nets. You can see how many you have enabled by the green header. Make sure the preprocessor is set to none, and the model is set to a depth processor, and now we'll hit generate. In the new generation, we could see that it's now giving us back our normal and our depth pass, so we know that both control nets are working. And based on seeing how the depth and normal weights work, since both control nets have a weight of 1, the resulting image is being overdriven and the color is being shifted. To get the result you want, you're going to have to tune the weight so that it's a good mix between the normal and depth passes. Here you could see how the image is affected by normalizing the weights of the two control nets so they add up to one. Now that we have a better understanding of how the weights affect our image, let's go with 0.8 for our depth weight and 0.2 for our normal weight and add a little bit of noise to our depth pass, set our batch count to four, and now generate our images. We have some nice options to choose from. I like this one the best, so let's copy the seed for it from the info panel, hit set as projection, and go back to our viewport. Now let's paste our seed back in, hit the six key to display textures in the viewport to see our image projected onto the model, and hit the bake projection on all button to bake the projection as a texture on all of the meshes. 
Once projected, you could spin your camera around to see how the projection is looking in the round. Not great. The texture is being projected through to the other side of the tank, so it's useless at any other angle. So let's fix it by baking multiple projections onto the same mesh. To do that, I'm going to group the camera and animate a turnaround over six frames so I get a good snapshot of the different sides of the tank. Then let's go through the turnaround frames and adjust them so they frame the model nicely in each projection. And now we'll enable the Batch Project checkbox. We'll set the Generate Every Frame checkbox to On, since we want each frame to be a new generated image. And we'll set our Start and End Times based on the animation in the last step. I'll set the Start to 2 since we already have our first projection on the tank, so we'll skip that one. And hit Bake Projection on All. Each frame will be generated and baked onto the mesh automatically. So go grab a cup of coffee while you wait, or take this time to like, subscribe, and join our Discord. And done. And the multiple projections are looking a lot better than before. Let's go to the Edit tab and take a closer look at them. Here you could see all of the projections layered on top of the tank from each angle. Let's right-click on the thumbnail to check out the image being projected. When dealing with this many projection layers, the Maya viewport isn't going to do a great job of visualizing the blends properly, so let's hit IPR Render to get a better representation of how the layers are blending. You could use the Solo checkbox on your layers to visualize each projection independently for finer tuning. The IPR renderer will automatically refresh with just that projection, so you could see exactly what each projection is doing. You could adjust how the masks are affected with the three passes that are automatically generated for every projection, facing ratio to camera, distance, and vignette. We'll adjust these more later. For now, let's hit Merge Composite to merge all of these layers into a single UV texture and right-click on the thumbnail of the generated texture to open it. Now, with a single baked-down texture, the viewport is a lot more useful at visualizing the textured model from all of the angles. Uh-oh. I accidentally merged my composite with some of my layers hidden. No problem. Let's click on Restore Comp on our UV Texture layer to bring back all of our previous projections so we could show those hidden layers and adjust our projection masks a bit better. Now let's fine-tune our projection using Solo checked on so that each projection is only affecting the best areas for that projection. And now, let's merge our composite again to look at our texture. Since it's all in a single texture now, you could make additional adjustments in your favorite image editor. In this case, I did some color adjustments to the tread so they don't share the same coloration as the rest of the tank. And here is the final result. There are still some problem spots that we'll deal with in another video using image to image to improve the quality and add additional details to our texture, but this is a pretty good first pass to work from. Thanks for watching. If you want to see more on CGM Gray Box, join our Discord.